Good morning and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in the Mission Control Center. We have with us here Kenny Todd, who is the Ops Integration Manager for the Space Station Program. And he's going to give us an update on the uh, incident with the cooling loop uh, on board the space station yesterday. Tell us a little bit about what happened and what uh, the team here on the ground has been doing to get it fixed. Well, let's see. Uh, good morning. Um, yesterday, uh, well, as most people know, we have uh, we have two external uh, thermal control loops on the space station. Um, they, uh, the loads that are on space station, uh, the electrical loads, the heat loads, uh, all um, uh, the energy and the heat that, that gets developed um, uh, as those ORUs operate uh, gets uh, dissipated through through these external thermal control loops. And uh, we had yesterday a situation where one of those loops uh, um, powered down. Um, the uh, uh, the reason behind that is is uh, all still in work. Um, at this point, um, the uh, the system uh, it's it's up and running, but there's a key component of the system uh, called the flow control valve that uh, does not at this time appear to be uh, working properly. Uh, that particular valve, the uh, the role of it is to is to help uh, regulate the temperature of the ammonia in that loop. Uh, it's very critical that, uh, that we maintain uh, the temperature in that loop so that, uh, so that when that um, um, ammonia is reintroduced into the, uh, to the heat exchanger um, that's, that's on the node two, that, uh, that the, uh, the water that's also flowing through that heat exchanger does not freeze. And so, so anyway, that's a, a very delicate balance that we have to, uh, to, uh, to operate in. And so we have systems and checks and balances in place so that uh, if the temperature in that loop um, uh, gets too cold, that the loop itself will shut down, and that's what happened yesterday. And so uh, once the loop was repowered, um, this, uh, this uh, flow control valve uh, that helps to regulate that temperature, it became apparent as the team was recovering the loop that, uh, that it wasn't quite uh, functioning the way we thought, and we weren't getting the, the same level of temperature, temperature response that, uh, that we were expecting. Uh, so uh, for that reason, uh, we chose to uh, uh, leave the leave the system uh, not integrated, uh, and and by doing so, uh, that forced us to uh, to have to take some of the loads uh, off of the node two, uh, some of the heat loads, uh, which caused us to to power down some some um, boxes, some ORUs, some systems that that are considered non-critical. Um, ORUs that stands for orbital uh, replacement orbital unit. Orbital replacement unit, correct. And so, uh, so we took those boxes down. Uh, again, we haven't lost any, any uh, primary functionality. There is uh, some uh, redundancy that we're down right now. Uh, but again, that's not uh, something that, that I would call critical to day-to-day to -day station, station operations. Uh, should we have a failure in one of those areas, obviously we would want the, we would want the redundant unit up. So, so this is a, a position we don't want to be in long term. And so uh, the team is continuing to work through um, the fault tree of what might be going on with this particular uh, flow control valve, and uh, and uh, that work is ongoing as we speak. And so uh, uh, you know, in the in the meanwhile, uh, we've got a good stable configuration. The crew's in good shape. No no issues there. They're continuing to go about their day to day uh, activities. Um, you know, where where we can, we're giving them good science. Um, and uh, all the science that we've collected up to this point is not at risk, so we're in good shape there. Uh, as far as uh, our forward plan, um, you know, the, we do have a, an orbital launch that's coming up. Uh, and this morning at the uh, at the mission management team meeting, we were doing our readiness for that particular launch, uh, which was to occur uh, next week on the 18th. And uh, and at this point, um, I deferred the go no go for that particular uh, launch. Until uh, until we get a little more information on this particular issue, as I said earlier, there's some some issues with redundancy right now. Uh, that when you uh, you get into a situation where you need to bring up another visiting vehicle, uh, you want to make sure that uh, that you're in the best possible position you can be in. And so, for that reason, we have what we call launch commit criteria, and that uh, that criteria is in place to ensure that that the systems are at the right uh, level of redundancy and operating properly. And uh, at this point, based on uh, that criteria, there are a, a few of those uh, uh, commit criteria that we cannot meet. And so uh, we understand which ones those are, and we're looking at options uh, for uh, things we might do to, to um, recover that redundancy. But obviously, our primary focus at this point is, is trying to uh, recover this loop. And when we recover this loop, we can power those, those uh, orbital replacement units on and, uh, and get back into a better, better configuration to support that launch.
So I'm sorry, you said the go, no go has been deferred. So at this point, the launch has not been given the go ahead to, to launch, but it also hasn't been postponed yet. Is that correct? correct? The, um, you know, as whenever we, uh, we uh, build a, a launch uh, time frame, we usually build it in Windows. And so, uh, uh, or this orbital launch is like all others. We have a, a series of, of dates that we can go on. And right now we could go all the way up until the 21st, First, possibly the 22nd, um, but but for sure we can go up through the 21st, and so we've got three or four days in a launch window that we can uh, we can decide to, um, you know, day by day. If if things look like we're, we're starting to mature an option to recover this particular loop, we can we can uh, slide a day here and there to uh, to try to let those those ideas and those thoughts and those procedures mature that get us there. Uh, so so at this point. Uh, uh, there, there isn't any any harm in, in, in pushing that go no go. Uh, this is clearly a, an issue that we need to try to uh, deal with in its entirety before we commit to the launch of Orbital One. Uh, so we're uh, we're committed to doing that, and I think giving the team an extra day or so to to think through what ways we might uh, might recover enough of the functionality to get comfortable with the launches is uh, is going to be our best course action over the next day. And so that's what we'll do. Um, I'll uh, get the mission management team back together uh, on Monday, and uh, and we'll see where we're at at that time and whether or not there's enough um, data and enough uh, reasoning behind uh, an attempt to to go to go uh, fly the Orb One launch. And uh, if between now and then uh, it doesn't look like we're uh, we're going to uh, get to a, a good option or nothing's uh, coming apparent to us, then we can start start moving moving in that launch window to the right a little bit and uh, and deciding to uh, to give the team uh, yet some more time. Um, if in the in the near term discussions it doesn't look like there's anything that's that's on the horizon, um, then uh, then we'll look at, at other options that that might have to be considered, including uh, the removal and replacement of of that particular valve, which uh, which is housed inside a pump a pump module uh, external uh, to uh, to the station, and so uh, um, that will lead us to a, a series of discussions um, regarding spacewalks, and uh, and we'll have to to go uh, to go down that path. But at this point, um, uh, we're uh, or for lack of a better term, we're going to kick the can for sure. a little bit and go uh, go let the team work a little bit more. Okay, and I assume there's nothing that the crew is critically waiting on from Cygnus. Obviously, we want to get it launched as soon as we can, but uh, nothing that they need right away. No, there's there's nothing there that uh, that um, you know is is somehow or another critical to to operations moving forward. Uh, we've got we've got uh, you know our standard set of hardware on there. Uh, we've got some. Um, a piece of equipment for the for the EBA suits that when it gets up there we will uh, we will change that out. But again, that uh, um, uh, there's not anything in there that I would say is, is hugely critical to to us doing our normal operations. Okay, so you have the time you need, I guess, to work through all the different options and and decide what you need to do not only with the launch for next week but also for the fix of the system itself. At, at this point, uh, again, I think we're in the early stages of trying to understand it. Um, uh, I think everything that we can do is being done. Uh, the system is good and stable. The crew is in good shape. Uh, all the right folks on the ground are looking at the problem and trying to trying to assess exactly you know, what the what the root cause is and and what our options are to try to continue more, moving forward with the flight program. And uh, while we'd like to fly the orbital D1 mission in this window, uh, you know we're going to do what's right for. Uh, for the program and the crew, and, and we'll do it safely. And if that means that uh, that we can't do the Orb D1 mission while we go sort this out, then that's uh, that's the right thing to do, and we'll go do it. Okay. Well, I know this same system, I guess, we um, had a similar issue with back in 2010, I think. Can you talk a little bit about that, how this is the same or different as what we saw then? Well, um, when we talk about it in terms of the pump module, it's going to sound the same to everybody. Um, the difference here is that, that that in that particular instance, we had a pump that just shut down. If you look inside the pump module itself, there's several different components in there. Uh, in this instance, the problem we're having is with the flow control valve, which is while it's inside the same housing, it's a it's a separate piece of hardware, has a different controller on it, and so. Um, I would say this is a that was a, a failure to uh, 
to, uh, back in 2010, the pump failed. So that was a failure to be able to move the ammonia. Uh, what we're having here is a failure to be able to control the temperature of the ammonia. This valve okay. helps us to to regulate by, by saying how much ammonia we're going to pull from the radiator versus how much we're pulling from, from the normal uh, bypass loop, which is a smaller loop that runs just through the pump and some cold plates and, and back around again. So it's one that, that operates at a little higher temperature. And, and so you, th this valve is basically a, a mixing valve valve, if you will, and it helps us regulate the temperature. You can modulate it. It modulates automatically based on what the temperature um, happens to be at that particular time and what we're trying to control it to. And so that, it, it, while it's in the same pump module, it's a different area of the okay. module. Okay. And well, I know in 2010, we ended up doing a spacewalk to go out and, and fix it. As you mentioned that that's, you know, a possibility. We don't know yet that we'll, we'll get to that possibility, that that point, but um, if we do need to go do a spacewalk, we have the parts on the station that we could use to replace it? We do. We have spare pump modules on orbit. Um, I think there's no no issue with being able to uh, to uh, have the hardware to go do it. And, and in fact, again, this will look a lot like what we did in 2010. It's going out into that same location, and so um, a lot of the choreography will, will look the same. Um, Back when we did the the uh, the pump module uh, change out back then, uh, we didn't have the benefit of of the uh, knowledge that we've captured as a result of the last EVA where we had a problem with the, the crew member and water in the suit. So we're a lot smarter now, and so there are going to be some things that, that uh, we'll have to do a little bit differently in preparing for an EVA going forward. Uh, just ensuring that uh, the suit's in, in a good shape, um, that we put every mitigation possible in place. And there are a few since, uh, since that time frame uh, to ensure that, uh, that we've, uh, we've got the, the crew member uh, protected. And so, 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 yes, I think we're in good shape moving forward. If we have to go do an EVA, it's just a matter of this time we have to go crank through the plan and, and, uh, and let folks go, go, go put the plan on paper and, and go get ready to execute it if we have to go that path. I don't know. You're basically just going to take whatever time you need. But do you have any any idea what to expect on terms of in terms of a time frame when we might know what exactly the issue is? Uh, in terms of exactly what the problem is, um, you know, this is this is a tough one because this is uh, not hardware you can get to. It's external to the station, so we can't go open it up, look at the valve, and say, you know, well, it's a seal that's shifted or it's a sensor that's that's come off or something, it, it, that's not going to be obvious to us. And so the team is, is trying to manipulate this valve and trying to draw some conclusions just based on secondary cues, what the temperature is doing, what the flow rate's doing as they move this valve. And and so uh, without putting eyes on valve, it's it's going to be very tough to, to get specifically right at it. Um, but, uh, you know, this is this is one of those things when whenever we, we do, if we have to replace it, it'll be on a much grander scale because we'll, we'll replace the pump and everything else that's in there that goes along with the with the flow control valve. Okay, and you've got time to think about that. There's no <coughs> looming deadline that you need to make a decision by, um, or you, you need to get the the loop back up and running for. You know, um, in general, uh, we have two two loops on station. Um, our our um, uh, our our best position to be in is to have both those loops up and running and available to us. And then, if uh, while we're sitting at one loop, and I, I think we're somewhat vulnerable, and so uh, uh, clearly from a program perspective, our our intention would be to try to to move sooner rather than later to recover that functionality, unless we have a very good plan and a very good understanding of how to provide that function. Um, you know, should we have an additional failure? And at this point, uh, I don't know that we have that plan. So, so our intention would be to try to get get recovered as as quick as reasonably possible. Uh, you know, uh, taking into account you know the, the the time necessary to get ready to go do an EVA if that's the path we have to take, or if we have some other options that allow us to stay with the configuration we have, but we just have to to operate a little smarter or do it a little differently. Uh, you know, allow enough time to let those ideas mature and and get um, get potted. Okay. Well, thanks so much. I think I think that covers the situation as it is at this point, and we appreciate your time. And uh, well, you can stay tuned to uh, www.nasa.gov slash station for continuing updates on exactly what's going on on board the space station and with the crew of the Expedition 38. We'll stop there for now. Thanks again. This was Kenny Todd, the integra Ops Integration Manager for the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston.